I'm Charlie Cooper live in Bernie and in minutes I'll have more on a fire that took the life of one and injured two others. If they come, you must build it. The nine-figure bond proposal the city's largest school district says it needs to keep up with growth. Welcome back to Eyewitness News this morning on this Thursday. It is January 25th and another very cold morning. Yeah, thanks for joining us for Eyewitness News this morning. Paul's off this morning. Stacia filling in for him. Yeah, uh, you know what, Sarah, you're up. It's cold and I feel like January flew by. Don't yes, like it did? yes, it did. I can't believe it's 25th already. Yeah, and don't forget, Barry, Valentine's Day, February 14th. I won't forget. You know, there's a neat thing happening tonight at Blue Star. It's uh -huh. uh, Blue Star for uh, Veterans, I think is what it's called. Blue Star for Veterans. It deals with Triumph motorcycles. It's uh -huh. kind of a neat thing. They've kind of become this status symbol thing. Yeah. Uh, not really the morning to ride one, that's for sure. Well, if you do, it's going to be cold. I guess some people <laughs> like the cold, though. Looking at your current temperature, 34 degrees. So, as I've been saying throughout the show, the Humidity is high, but the dew point is low. As a result, you are feeling even cooler probably this morning than 34 degrees. Oh, you want to come over here? Hello. Hi. Okay, that's not going to work. Also over here, I want to show you these South Texas temperatures. It is uh, in the 30s, the low 30s. Anywhere you look over across South Texas, that's pretty much the deal. 24 over there in Fredericksburg. Now I'm showing up. Hey, everyone. <laughs> I also want to let you know that uh, it feels like, as I mentioned before, it feels cooler than 34 degrees because of that low dew point. It's at 28. And we're going to keep an eye on your forecast as well as your traffic. Let's go. Do I need to back up for traffic? All right, I'm back. <laughs> I just want to let you know that we're seeing some slowdown around 181 in the Floresville area and checking outside with our cameras. This is what's happening on your morning commute. Not a whole lot. I-35 a division. You can see traffic moving smoothly as it's heading into the downtown area and away for it, away from it. 281 at the quarry really picking up though. Guys, back to you. Stacia, thank you. Also now breaking news north of San Antonio. A woman was killed in an overnight house fire. Two others were taken to the hospital. Yeah, the fire started around 3 this morning on Blue Bonnet Drive in Bernie. Charlie Cooper is live near what's left of that mobile home. And Charlie, have they figured out what caused the fire? Well, Barry and Sarah, investigators are still out here. I'm looking into what the cause of this fire was, and firefighters are out here still monitoring hot spots. Um, the fire took place here on the 200 block of Blue Bonnet Drive in Bernie and has now burned to the ground. This mobile home has completely burned to the ground. Firefighters say when they got here a little after 3 this morning, they arrived to the home fully engulfed in flames, and only moments later, a woman showed up on the scene screaming that it was her mother's home on fire. Now, firefighters were able to get two of the three people out of that home. An elderly man in his 60s and a younger woman were transported to University Hospital. That man's wife, though, did die in the fire. I actually spoke to a neighbor who lives two doors down, and she said that she was somewhat familiar with these neighbors when she woke up this morning and smelled uh, the fire and heard the fire trucks out here. She immediately ran outside because she said there are a lot of elderly people who live on this block, and neighbors do look out for one another. So, of course, she was really, really sad to hear that her neighbors had been hurt. Back to you guys. Yeah, very sad, Charlie. Thank you. Also new this morning, a man sleeping in his bed was shot when someone drove by and started shooting. Police say someone in a black sedan fired several shots along West Mitchell, hitting the guy in the leg. He was taken to the hospital, but is expected to be okay. Right now, police are not sure if he was actually the target of the shooting. New Braunfels is wiping the egg off its face this morning after appointing a dead woman to a city board. The city council appointed Wanda Sandlin to the Housing Authority Board Monday. Problem is, Sandlin died in August. A city representative says applicants are normally contacted before appointments, but no one could get a hold of Sandlin. Somehow, her application still managed to move forward. The city is now looking for a replacement. People who live in the Northside Independent School District could be paying more if a bond proposal for nearly $850 million is approved. Last night, the district's board voted unanimously to put the bond on the May 5th ballot. Some of that money would be used to build four new schools and another magnet program. The bond would also pay for upgrades at existing schools. But that comes at a cost for homeowners in that district over a seven-year period. 
for an average home value that nearly 219,000 homeowners would start paying an extra $26 in taxes in 2019, with that increasing to $265 in 2025. I don't have an issue with it because it's, I know the schools need upgrades. For my case, it will be an additional thing I have to seriously consider. If approved by voters, the bond will not impact taxes for senior citizens. The last bond approved was in 2014. An historic part of the U.S. Supreme Court heading to UTSA, Justice Sonia Sotomayor, the first Latina ever appointed, will be on the main campus today. Sotomayor will speak with students about her journey through the judiciary system. Henry Ramos will be there. He'll have more on her visit later this afternoon. Your time is 6.36 in this morning's Money Watch. President Trump is in Switzerland to talk business, and a new utensil is joining more and more dinner tables. Diane King Hall, live from New York this morning with the details and a look at the markets. Good morning, Diane. Good morning, Sarah. Well, investors here on Wall Street are watching the World Economic Forum in Davos, where the right President Trump is wheels down there now. It's another mixed finish for stocks yesterday. The Dow added 41 points. The Nasdaq lost 45. After copping to slowing down our older iPhones, Apple is now putting out an update to let users turn off the feature. The free upgrade will be out this spring. The additional control is intended to appease users who have been upset with the company since admitting it had been surreptitiously slowing down older model devices. Malls across the country are struggling to stay afloat. The economic picture gets worse when malls lose their anchor stores. Cushman and Wakefield reports major chains are expected to close 11,000 stores this year and predicts as many as 300 malls out of 1,100 may not exist in seven years. Sarah? Diana, I think this is something a lot of people are going to appreciate. I'm hearing that there may be a new rule that says no phones at the dinner table. Hmm. <laughs> Hopefully so. The new American dinner table is now forks, knives, and smartphones. The recent research suggests one in three Americans can't sit down to a meal without their smartphone. 29% of those surveyed by Nutrisystem said they need their phone at the table with them for every meal. With a study of 2,000 people, it also found more than half want the phone at the table most of the time, and older Americans are less likely to need the phone during mealtime than younger people. Sarah? You know, it's funny. This reminds me of something that happened the other day. I was at a restaurant ordering something. Mm -hmm. I was on my phone. This elderly woman walked up right next to me and said, huh, look at that. Everybody on their phone. And she didn't look too happy about it. And I thought, you know yeah. what? She has a good point. Nobody is talking. Nobody is doing I anything. Know. I've thought that, too. So I'm guilty of it. I've been, like, kind of on both sides in the sense where I've been out to dinner. I'm like wanting to talk to the group and everybody's on their phone so I'm like oh I guess I'll just get on my phone too you know because we just always have them in our hand it's just kind of second nature now so you have to be more mindful to put down your device so maybe there will be some new etiquette rules coming exactly what I was thinking just simple etiquette Diane thank you so much see you tomorrow well here's right. something else technology is done away with remember Blockbuster the last existing store in Texas is shutting down this week Edinburgh's about an hour northeast of McAllen. A sign on the store door there says it'll open Saturday for a liquidation sale. Workers say they'll close after that. Folks who live in the town say a piece of their childhood is now gone. And something else that was gone for a long time is apparently coming back in Texas. A bald eagle is spotted just beautifully soaring above South San Antonio. The most amazing sight, the yeah, you can't, it's so big. Photographer Paula Salazar caught these pictures near the Mission Reach area. Several other people saw the eagle too, and they all say they saw it south of the Roosevelt River crossing near Riverside Golf Course. Experts say if you go looking for it, watch from a distance and don't do anything to bother the bird. To help you out, we've set up a map on Kens5.com that's going to increase your chances of seeing it, but you better do it quickly. Here's why. It could be migratory and leaving that area within the next few weeks. So even if it's a little cold, it's okay. Brave it. I think it's worth a sight. I'll tell you what, if you've never seen one, they are something to see in the wild. Majestic. Just flying free. Got so, a little chilly weather to fly in. Yeah, I know, right? Stasia. If you're yeah. heading outside, you definitely.